Hello guys, welcome back once again to Pathology by Ranjitaya YouTube channel. So like I said in the previous video, I'm going to go have a series of videos on gross discussion of pathology specimens. So thanks to the students who shared the images PDF with me. I'm going to cover whatever I've got, a little bit of understanding of how to present or how to present yourselves in a viva when a specimen or jar is give, given for you. If you have missed the first you, uh, video, just go back to the same channel. There'll be like a template on how to describe a gross specimen. I'll be using the same template and let's go directly to the specimen first, right? So now, if you look at this, it's a clear cut case of fatty liver and uh, you know the diagnosis already, right? So that is not the biggest problem. The problem here is how do I describe them, right? So when you have a description of any specimen, like I said previously, I have to start with, this is a jar mounted specimen of most probably an entire liver, right? So as by looking at it, I can see the entire architecture of the liver, the lobes of the liver, right? And everything is there, right? So I don't want you to make a comment now, whether it's an post-mortem specimen or it is an anti-mortem specimen, which has been removed by surgery. We can keep a comment later. I'll tell you the reason also very, very soon, right? So let's start with, this is a gross specimen of an jar mounted specimen of a liver. How did I identify it's a liver? Which based on the lobes here, I can see the lobes here. I can see the lobes of the liver and a very smooth outer surface and also the shape, right? Those are the clues for me to say it's liver, right? Because every organ has a, its own description. Though I'm not able to see the gall gallbladder here. If I can see the fossa, I can say it's a gallbladder fossa. I can see you can uh, talk about the peritoneal reflection also if it's required. But most of the time, liver is very, very simple to identify. One is the shape of the organ that will give you a classical clue, right? I don't want you to tell an uh, organ which is like this pointers for diagnosis it's kidney that's all as simple as that right so i have shape of the organ and then i have lobes and a very smooth outer surface all these points to a liver right now once i know the liver i can roughly measure the liver like i said uh, using a uh, just a simple clue of this is about 2.5 centimeter roughly measure the dimension since the photo i will not be able to talk about the dimension when you're talking about the dimension one thing is very very important i want you to know the normal dimension of the liver right why I am saying this is, if you know the normal dimension of an adult liver, I want you guys to comment on the below section, what is the normal dimension of an adult liver, then I can confidently say, okay, this liver is enlarged. Provided the patient is from an adult, the liver is from an adult, right? So once I know the normal, then measure this liver approximately, approx, need not be perfect, and say it's in hepatomegaly, right? So I am giving you pointers to talk for at least two, three minutes so that you, the examiner understands you really know what you're talking about, right? So based on the uh, size, dimensions approximately, and presuming it is from an adult liver, I feel that this liver is much more enlarged than a normal a normal person. So I think of an hepatomegaly, right? Then come to color. Because in a jar mounted specimen, unfortunately, one of the important thing, I cannot feel the consistency, right? So color of the liver is grossly a little bit of an yellowish color, right? My shirt is also similar, right? So it's an yellowish color liver yellow in color normal color of the liver is brownish to green architecture if it's fresh it has a reddish to brown because of the vascularity right so this is an yellowish color liver with a gross hepatomegaly right so this itself will kind of is okay for me to comment on the diagnosis but there's a very important point now most of you students what you will miss is i want you to look at the cut surface because by default you know that it's a fatty liver Fatty liver by default, you'll say that it's a fatty liver, yellow is color, that's enough, right? So talking extra about the cut surface, there's a little bit of cut surface definitely visible. Whatever visible cut surface is, it's not having any bands of fibrosis, it's not having any nodularity, it's not having any lesion. That is very, very important, right? I'll tell you why the negative findings are important. On the cut surface of the liver, there is no nodularity, that's important. There is no lesions, that's important. So this tells me it's just a fatty liver has not gone into cirrhosis. So there could be a possibility of a cirrhosis coexisting, right? So whatever cut surface I can see here is looking normal. But again, comment that I would have to take multiple serial cut sections to talk about the architecture of the rest of the liver, which is not visible here, right? So now we have gotten a premise on what to describe for, right? So we have told the uh, examiner or the professor that I am having a liver specimen which is grossly big, which is yellow in color, cuts off as no lesion. So most probable, my diagnosis is going to be fatty liver. Once you know it's a fatty liver, you can add a point if required. It might be most, mostly in post-mortem resection of a liver. 
right? It might be mostly a postmortem specimen. For the only reason, no one is going to do a hepatectomy for a fatty liver, right? No one is ever going to remove the liver just because it's fatty change is happening. Then your liver, my liver also should be removed, right? So then you can say that most likely it should be a postmortem specimen, which is jar mountain, as simple as that, right? So what are the follow-up questions which can come for a fatty liver patients? Right? I want you guys to comment in the below section. Consider this as a viva for you and comment on the answer. I already asked you an anatomy question on the normal size of the liver. I'll try to put the answers of whatever I'm discussing here. One, tell me at least a few etiologies of fatty liver. This will definitely be asked, right? Second, there's a possibility to ask what are the different changes? What are the different types of steatosis, right? Fatty liver is nothing but steatosis, right? They have talk about macro and micro vesicular uh, change of fatty liver few examples of macro and few examples of micro third this can definitely come tell me at least a stain which is involved for fat demonstration in a biopsy right fourth tell me what is the nature of specimen where i can use this fat stain right so can we do it in hne formula fixed or do we need frozen section to demonstrate that right so we'll stop with this i wanted to create like five minutes video so it's easy for you when you are in traveling just to have a quick look at it and done like like this we'll try to do the entire pdf of whatever questions whatever uh, images i have and let's make sure our pathology education is also uh, practical is also sorted right so if you're here first time i'm dr anjit subscribe to the channel and let's learn more pathology and medicine together Bye bye